I had already been teaching for over a decade and my wife and I, chasing the competitive dream, had moved to Houston, Texas to work with who we thought was the best coach in this country at that time. And we moved from there to Columbus, Ohio. And when we came back to New England, I had parceled out all my students in the Boston area to other teachers and I thought it was rude a year later to come back and say I want them back. So we moved from me from the Boston area and my wife from the Attleboro area to Rhode Island. Also because it looked to me like I get, could get affordable rent at a building that was overgrown by Poison Ivy and Sumac, which was this building. So it took me a while to figure out who owned it. And once I figured that out, we worked out a reasonable rent and we went from two days a week up to seven days a week now. I started taking ballroom dance when my first semester at college at activities day I walked around and saw that they had a ballroom club so I was very excited because I had danced most of my life and I didn't think I was able to dance in college and that was when I started. I started taking ballroom lessons in September of 2005 six years ago and the reason I started was not by choice at all but basically because my girlfriend at the time wanted to do ballroom lessons and I'm a nice guy so I figured that I'll give it a shot I have nothing to lose except my dignity but I gave it a shot and it turned out to work to work out pretty good uh, my background in ballroom dancing goes way 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 back and has several very very false starts we have ancient grainy 8mm film of me on the beach at about three years old being led through dancing by my cousin who was about three years and three months and I did not want any part of it. A little bit later in life my parents gave me a dancing doll. It was a three foot tall doll with elastic straps on the hands and feet and a little crowns hat that I would weave my way in and out and prance up and down the stairs with and I'm sure they regretted for many years giving me that doll. Then I went to Boston University and like most men that come to ballroom dancing I thought maybe that would be a good place to meet women. So I went to a ballroom dancing class and I didn't meet women but I met a uh, not only a career but a what I consider to be the world's best life sport. I have been ballroom dancing for six years and I am now a ballroom dance teacher. So ballroom dance has become a huge passion of mine to the point of where I actually want to teach everyone ballroom dance so that they can love it just as much as I do. Um, where it's led me to today, basically just an activity where I thoroughly enjoy something I look forward to doing on a weekly basis, not only for the activity and the physical part of it, but mainly the people that I'm with and the enjoyment that I get out of spending time with the people who also love ballroom dancing and it's something that I enjoy on a daily basis and look forward to doing for the rest of my life. There are two aspects of ballroom dancing. There's a social aspect and there's a competing aspect and I've had the privilege and uh, the privilege and the enjoyment of doing both of them in the past six years and it's not for everybody competing. Um, social dancing is probably for everybody. It's a lot of fun but competing does take a lot of practice time, it does take a certain personality of hard work and it does take um, a little bit of uh, communication and people skills and more in terms of making a good partnership work. Um, so with the combination of the hard work and being able to be a good partner, um, it has led into a rather enjoy enjoyable part of my ballroom dancing career. and. Um, it's something that I've, I'm proud of my accomplishments. It's something that I'm glad that I've decided to do. It's something that I feel that I've gone, you know, steps and leaps in doing it. So I think that uh, anyone else interested in ballroom dancing should really look into both parts of it. And I feel that it's a rewarding, it's a rewarding thing to do to compete, go out, have a good partner, and be successful. <laughs> So there's a, a very common question about what's, what's the main reason people 
can come in to our studio or any dance studio, particularly a ballroom dancing studio where we're doing partner dancing, hands-on, and there's a whole slew of reasons, but they all involve typically life change. <laughs> state and we used to be working and living and going to church or temple all in the same communities but our lives are so fragmented here in the United States and pretty much all in the Western Hemisphere that to find a, a place to build community the group lessons are wonderful for developing friendships outside of our work circle um, and outside, in all honesty, outside of the of the charitable or religious circles. So I, I, again, it fills so many interests of so many people. I don't think there's a, any one reason except for to create a fuller life. I want to try and, and use not just my career time, but all of my time here on Earth to encourage as many people as I can to have as many circles of influence in their life and as many life experiences as they can and then to keep having that same ever-expanding circle for myself. Um, I watch adults who are very successful in their career but not necessarily in leadership roles take on uh, the leadership of a group of students that get together and we're going to go dance at nursing homes. And they arrange to meet together, to practice together, to choreograph together. I watch, we work with three different college groups, and I watch, I'm going to call them kids, doing what I did when I was in college, go from being hiding in the back row, or being the class clown, or being embarrassed about touching each other and giggling, to making good friends to some of them becoming officers in organizations, and again developing leadership skills, and, and the greater the conflict in those organizations, the greater the leadership skills, the greater, the faster the maturity comes. <laughs> My successful competing has been great and um, it's had its positive effect but like I just mentioned the relationship would be definitely something that I uh, wouldn't you know wouldn't change or wouldn't substitute for anything so I'm glad I did it when I started ballroom dance I knew absolutely no one pretty much at college and joining the ballroom dance team made me feel like I was in a part of a family or a group. They are now some of my best friends because I was with them for so long and so many memories and good times together. We're definitely, you know, our own little unit, group, community type thing that, you know, it could never be broken pretty much. Because I don't have children of my own. I feel like I have several families of children and grandchildren and watching the, whether they're college students or whether they're students at 60 or 70 years old, learn something new. Whether it's a new way to work their body or a new way to work in relationship with other human beings, because dancing after all is a is a language and once you learn something in one language it transfers to another so quite frequently people as they learn to communicate better physically become much more articulate verbally and their relationships mature and that 
probably is the biggest payback for me in, in working this career. Look out in this morning, show at the bar.